ETH went up almost 20% on Monday, making it the biggest daily price increase ever in the history of ETH. I bet you're wondering what is going on. Prior to Monday, we were sitting at a 25% likelihood of the ETH ETF approval, which was to be decided on May 23rd. Now, in a surprise move, it appears that the SEC has done a complete 180 and the odds of the approval have gone from 25% and are now sitting at 75%, though many will tell you it is basically inevitable at this point. So what just happened? Well, in today's episode, we're going to cover is the ETF getting approved? Why the sudden change from the SEC? What does this mean for crypto and your bags? And what should we expect moving forward? GMGM, GM, welcome to Milk Road Radio, the easiest path to get smarter about crypto. I'm Jay Hamilton, joined by my co-host Kyle Reedhead, and we believe that on-chain is the next online, and we're here to help you capitalize on it. Crypto will go up more than 100x in both users and value over the next decade. If you're listening to this right now, you're extremely early and have an incredible opportunity to capitalize. At Milk Road, our mission is to make you smarter about crypto. That's why we're doing today's podcast and why we send you a daily newsletter for free. But if you're ready to level up as an investor, then let me tell you about Milk Road Pro. We crafted this resource for investors who are already smart enough about crypto and are looking for more actionable insights on how to invest successfully in one of the fastest growing industries on earth. Every week, we break down the latest trends, dive into tokenomics of popular and up and coming tokens, and get into the nitty gritty of market analysis, all to help you invest smarter. Plus, we have a private Discord community for pro members. It's like your backstage pass to the Milk Road crew, exclusive insights, hot tips, and live AMAs with our team. Now, if you're looking to level up as an investor, then click the link in the show notes below and sign up to Pro Today. Don't let this bull market opportunity slip through your fingers. Kyle, let's jump in. First question, what just happened? It's been a while, 36 hours, let's say, as we record this, as you guys listen to this, it's going to be Wednesday morning. So heck, it's probably going to be even a bit crazier when you're listening here. But just to give a bit of context. So obviously, we've had the approval for the SEC was coming May 23rd. Okay, This was the next ETF application for Ethereum. And basically, they had to either approve it or they had to deny it. There was no more delaying. So this was the big date. It got to the point where everyone was just like, this thing's not happening. There were so many things leading up to this that were like, it's not happening. And at that 25%, I think even people were saying it's basically zero at this point. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden on Monday, if you saw on Twitter, all of a sudden out of nowhere, the SEC just did this 180 where they have asked all the applicants to basically expedite the process to refile. There's a few things that they have to do to refile, but refile their application. And they also notified the NASDAQ and the exchanges that are going to list these ETFs that, hey, we're going to approve these things. You need to get ready. And so basically they said, everyone, you need to be ready. It was like Wednesday morning or Tuesday morning, I think it was. You guys got to have this these filings like finished so that we can do our final due diligence and then get these things approved, basically. So yeah, it's changed the Bloomberg boys. That's who we're talking about here, Eric Balkunis and that. They went from 25% to 75%. But it appears, and even just today, just before we started recording, there's news that the, the NASDAQ was told, hey, we're leading towards approving this. You guys need to get ready. And so it's basically inevitable. It's pretty much happening. Should be Thursday, but there's even talk that it might happen on Wednesday. So it has been a wild turn of events. And the interesting thing is no one is freaking ready for this. And it was just came at a complete surprise. The Bitcoin one was a bit different, right? Everyone knew leading up to it for months, it was going to happen. There was so much conversation with the SEC. But this time around, there was just, there's been no comments on these applications and then just what, 48 hours before the date, it's just boom, it's all happening. It is a good week for ETH holders. That is for sure. This is super exciting news. Okay, here's the question that I'm sure is on everybody's mind is why did the SEC all of a sudden change their view? So we don't really know, but here's the what we believe anyway. Crypto is becoming very political over the last few weeks, really. It's changed really fast. Part of it is Trump has came out and said, hey... I'm pro crypto, Biden doesn't know anything about crypto. And if I'm elected, I'm gonna do really good things for crypto, right? He's been launching NFTs, he's been big in the space. So he really came out of the last two weeks on this stance. And a lot of that's because of Ryan Selkis from Masari, who's been really pushing this. He's been really getting into the political world and, and trying to get a political movement here. And it's working on the Trump side. Biden has taken the complete opposite stance, right? But what happened with Trump first coming publicly saying he's pro crypto, 
Then you had on Friday, the SAB 121 rule change. Basically, the SEC was trying to push saying that banks can't custody crypto assets. So they were trying to push this forward. It went to a vote and it was a bipartisan vote, 60 to 38, voting to deny this, this requirement. And even the majority leader for Biden voted against Biden because Biden came out and said that even if this thing gets passed, I'm going to veto it. So it was a surprise to have this many votes. And I think there was a bunch of swing votes from the Democrats. There's this big turn of events happening all of a sudden in the political world saying, hey, actually, we're going to support crypto in the US. And Biden, I think, is a little bit caught off guard. The regulators like Gary Gensler and the CC, a little bit caught off guard. And so it's putting a lot of pressure on the Biden administration. We don't know exactly what happened here, but the assumption is either Biden or someone in, in this political party has said, hey, we need to change our tune quickly or we are not going to get voted in. And so they've told Gary Gensler, hey, you guys need to approve this stuff. That is the like currently the assumption of what's going on. Again, we don't actually know. Also yesterday, the same time that this news happened with the ETTF, the FDIC chair, his name is Martin Grunberg, he resigned and he was the guy that's been the leader of Operation Choke Point 2.0, trying to cut off the banks, trying to cut off crypto. He's been the, like the spearhead of this and he is all of a sudden just had to step down. So things are happening really fast right yeah. now. And, and a lot of it is just this political movement to go pro crypto. And I think that's what's happening right here. And so it's pretty wild. Maybe it's just BlackRock pulling strings like this is what they do. But I'm pretty sure it's more on the political side right now. Obviously, it's an election year in the US, so it's a big deal. They need to get this right. So we'll see. There's a couple other things coming out this week in terms of just like political decisions and more voting. We still don't know if Biden's going to veto that SAB 121 agreement. So we'll see. I think that decision comes on Thursday, but it appears that this pressure is really working and that's why they did this quick 180. Regardless of what happened, this is super exciting news. Here's the thing. It happened on Monday afternoon in Eastern Standard Time. How did the market react? What was the impact <laughs> on ETH and the rest of the crypto markets, Kai? Yeah, I think everyone saw this and has seen this already, but ETH absolutely went ballistic, almost 20% up on the day and then continue to go up the next day as well. I think it's, as we're recording this up, like 24% in the last two days. It is the biggest uh, daily candle in Ethereum's history. So just a massive move. And I think the reason why is it was clear that most investors were under allocated to ETH, right? Mm -hmm. This caught everyone off guard. No one was ready for this. A lot of people, ETH was reaching, it's like, low moment, right? Everyone's giving up on it. Everyone was talking about Solana and Bitcoin and those were going to be the it things, the cycle. The narrative was getting in that ETH was going to be skipped this cycle. It's still an important asset. It's a great technology, but no one cares about it this cycle. We'll have to wait for next cycle was what the like strong narrative was happening. It was hitting its low versus Bitcoin. Solana was just crushing it. And all of a sudden people are scrambling. They're like, shit, I am not allocated to this asset. I need more. I need more ETH. I need more ETH beta assets. And so everything is going nuts. You look at the ETH ecosystem, the tokens that are on Ethereum, Lido, ENS, the L2 tokens like Arbitrum, they're up like 30, 40, 50%. Pepe, I think was up 60%. So like it is just full on nuts right now in the price action of Ethereum and the assets that are on Ethereum. So that has been pretty wild. I think other than that, in terms of just like the people in this space, everyone's a little bit confused, just wasn't really sure what was going on. So people are just trying to get some answers. What does this mean? Is it actually going to get approved? If it does get approved, does it have staking? Does it not have staking? What about all the lawsuits? The SEC is basically suing every big company in Ethereum right now, including the Ethereum Foundation. So are they really going to approve this asset for an ETF if they're trying to fight that it's a security? So there's a lot of unknowns, but here's what we know so far. It's coming pretty quickly. So it looks like they're not going to allow staking. So part of the like refiling that they wanted was remove staking. So it's pretty clear that these ETFs are going to get approved but they are not going to be able to stake the ETH. Um, I'll talk about why that matters in a second. I actually think it's a good thing. Um, the other thing that's been interesting that's come out just this morning is originally about two weeks ago, and the reason that we had the nail in the coffin for this ETH ETF was there was some wording in the filings and comments from the SEC saying that if they want these ETFs to be approved, they're going to need to file as like a security rather than a commodity-based rule, which was a little bit odd. Bitcoin didn't have to do this. And what we're seeing in the filing so far, because everyone has done the refilings this morning as we're talking, is they've stuck with the commodity-based rules. If this gets approved, this is the SEC basically conceding and saying ETH is not a security. So this is, has massive implications beyond just this ETF. And I think what's going to happen is likely all of the ETFs will get approved all at once. So all the applicants, not just, I think it's Vanek or whoever it is that- Fidelity, I think, is the one that's due on the 23rd, yeah. 
Yeah. So BlackRock is till later and a bunch of later, but they'll probably do what they did with Bitcoin and just like everything will get approved on Thursday. Now, to be clear, this doesn't mean that they go live on Thursday. Mm. This is just the filing to say that they are approved. It could take weeks to months to actually get the next forms done where they're actually going to figure out how they're going to launch this thing. Now, who knows? Maybe that's going to be sped up as well. We actually don't really know at this point. Um, but this, to be clear, what's happening, whether it's Wednesday or Thursday, it is not actually to go live. So we still don't know the date of when that's going to be just yet. Yeah, that's it. Other than that, we're still looking for answers. We're trying to figure out what made the SEC kind of change direction here. Is Gary Gensler going to get fired? Like, we don't know what's really going on. Uh, but all we know is we're so freaking back and it's wild. <laughs> Let's go. Thanks for bringing the energy today, Kai. I love it. Okay. So we know that this is likely getting approved. It's likely happening on Thursday. Doesn't mean trading of the ETH ETF would go live yeah. on Thursday. How long that would take is still an unknown. But let's just step back. What, what you said it yourself, we're so back. I love and hate that statement all at the same time. But it is today is a day when we should be all be saying that. What does this mean for the crypto blockchain industry as a whole? How, how big of a deal is this? It's massive. And I, I don't know that people really understand how big this is. Obviously, Bitcoin was a big deal. The, the Bitcoin ETF getting approved, that was what's making this happen too. So it, that was a really big deal. But I think this one is actually potentially bigger. The reason I say that is Bitcoin's always been in its own world, right? It's It was a trillion dollar asset or close to a trillion dollar asset before the ETFs got approved. It's not where the innovation of crypto exists. It's not a smart contract platform. It's just a store of value. It's very similar to gold, but it's digital. And so easy for everyone to wrap their heads around. We knew that the regulators didn't think that Bitcoin was a security. And so this one was already a little bit more widely accepted in the like TradFi world in general, whereas smart contract platforms and the rest of everything we're doing in crypto, whether it's DeFi and stable coins and gaming and all the things that we're doing, that was all like smoke and up in the air. We didn't really know. We've never really had this like legitimizing thing of smart contract platforms in the TradFi world. And what this does and what makes this approval different than Bitcoin is this is a smart contract platform. This is where all the innovation is happening and not just saying like it only happens on Ethereum. Of course, it happens in Solana. I'm saying smart contract platforms in general, right? This is where stable coins, DeFi, all the things are happening. And we have basically just got approval saying, okay, this thing's fine. It's legit. Let's do this. Now, they're not saying that all the tokens are fine. I'm sure there's still a bunch of shit tokens that are securities <laughs> yeah, yeah. and whatever. Like we're not saying this everything's a go. But we're saying, you know what, we're down with this sort of decentralized movement and building applications on a blockchain, um, whereas that wasn't what they were saying when they approved Bitcoin. So I think one, I think that's what makes this just so big and it opens up the door for so much more. So I think that's one big thing there. I think that more people or more institutions end up moving on chain from this approval than they do from the Bitcoin approval. And the reason is there's a couple of things. One, when the Bitcoin ETF got approved, Everyone had to go and do their due diligence. All these institutions had to go and learn about Bitcoin, right? But as I said, Bitcoin was simple. You didn't have to go too far. To learn about Ethereum and what that thing's doing and what can exist on there and how this can change the internet and change the financial system, this is a very long and deep rabbit hole that every single institution in the US now has to go through. Not even just US, probably worldwide. They all have to go down this rabbit hole just like they just did with Bitcoin. They're still trying to figure out Bitcoin. So it's actually gonna be a lot for them. But they now have to figure this out. And when you start to understand Ethereum, that's when you really understand what's happening in crypto and on blockchain, right? It is a big difference from what Bitcoin's doing. So I think one, that's a big deal. But also the way that this is set up, because they're not allowing staking for ETH, the interesting thing is, is this. You could buy the Bitcoin ETF or you could buy Bitcoin on chain. And there's not much of a difference in terms of your outcome, in, in terms of how much you make. Most of the Bitcoin ETFs don't even have fees right now. And they, those that do, it's very small. And probably it's cheaper to just buy that than having to move fees on chain using like a Coinbase or whatever, because there's, there's fees associated with that. So there's not much of an incentive to move on chain. Now, I do think Bitcoin is a good teaser and people will move and buy the, the real on chain stuff as they figure it out. But with ETH, it's very different. When they do their due diligence, they're going to learn that there is this thing called yield. And it is basically a risk free rate of, that you can earn on your ETH. And it is like three to 4%, right? That doesn't exist in Bitcoin. And so, you can't get that from the ETH ETF. And so what I think is going to happen here is institutions are going to learn about that and go, oh, why would I buy this ETF? I can go online or on chain, sorry. I can buy the ETH and I can stake it myself. 
And now like you're in 3.4%, 3 or 4%, institutions absolutely love yield. And so I think this is going to be a really big thing to educate these institutions on what this means. And they're going to want this yield. And so I think a lot of them are actually going to move on chain rather than just buying the ETF itself. I think there'll be a combination of both. It's still going to do well, still have tons of flows, but I think this is just a bigger deal to bring things on chain. And then lastly, the supply crunch that this creates with ETH is so different than anything we've ever seen. The exciting thing about Bitcoin was, hey, this was the first you know, asset to be wrapped by an ETF that humans can't increase the supply. That was the big narrative with this ETF and why we had this big supply crunch. It was quite obvious. ETH takes this thing to another level because ETH is deflationary. It's not just that we can't increase the supply. It's that the supply is actually decreasing every single day. And that's going to get even more and more aggressive because this ETF, frankly, is going to create more activity on chain, which means we're going to burn more ETH. So that's a big deal. Then there's the fact that 35% of all ETH is currently staked, and that is increasing. 10% of all ETH is being used in DeFi. So there actually just is no ETH, and ETH is becoming more and more deflationary while we're about to open up the pipeline to Ethereum through this ETF. So like we talk about the supply crunch we had with Bitcoin, it's going to be even more exaggerated over on ETH, which is also about a third of the size of Bitcoin. So it's hard to not be extremely bullish about this launch. We'll put it that way. It's an interesting take you have that ETH, the ETH ETF might be more, much more of a gateway drug to crypto and the on-chain yeah, world that's a great than, way to put it. than the Bitcoin ETF was. The Bitcoin ETF was the start, but not really a gateway to understand smart contracts and the broader ecosystem that is, that is being built on chain with which Ethereum will lead people down that path, which will just lead more people on chain. Okay, big question though. Bitcoin ETF, incredible inflows in the first three months, three and a half months now of it launching. What do you think that we'll see when the ETH ETF does go live? What sort of flows do you think we can expect? Same as Bitcoin? Before we get into flows, even before the Bitcoin ETF was approved, we went up, I don't know, Bitcoin's market cap went up by like hundreds of billions of dollars. So like the flows will come to ETH even before this ETF gets approved. That's, I can mm -hmm. almost guarantee that, right? And then there's just like the indirect part of these approvals. Like Bitcoin, the flows have been great. I think it's 20 billion over the first three and a half months. It's been a lot of flows going into Bitcoin ETF specifically, but its market cap went up way more because you had it was legitimizing. There's you no know, companies want to now hold it on their balance sheets, whether it's ETF or not. Like a lot of flows just came. And I think the same thing's going to happen with ETH without a doubt in my mind. And so that is a really big deal. The second thing is, will the flows be the same as Bitcoin? Absolutely not. And so we can't be comparing like Bitcoin had 20 billion. So ETH has 5 billion. So it's a failure. That's not how this works. It is a much smaller asset. This is a big surprise. So it's not like people have been learning about it for months. So it's going to be very different. If we look at one of the best things we can look at is, so Grayscale had launched its trust funds last cycle, in last bull cycle, and it had GPTC and it had ETHE, okay? These two, they're not ETFs, but they're somewhat similar and anyone could buy them. It didn't get as much flows as something like these ETFs will, obviously, because they're more like, they're like pink slips. They're like not super legit, but they're legit enough. <laughs> but what we saw was in terms of the amount that both of these accum uh, accumulated in terms of value, ETH was about 33% of Bitcoin. So maybe we can extrapolate that and go, okay, maybe ETH gets about 33% of the inflows as what Bitcoin uh, has received so far. Again, no idea if that actually happens. It's just some napkin math to mm -hmm. see. So if that would happen, then that means in the th first three and a half months from the ETH ETF specifically, it'd be about $8 billion of inflows, which is something like, I don't know, at least from when we did this math in one of our pro reports, it was like two and a half percent of the total market cap of ETH, which is like really massive. So I don't really have a strong opinion or not on Will the flows be big? I think Ethereum is definitely harder to understand. You have to go down a deeper rabbit hole. Although at the same time, it has yield, which people love. And then at the same time, it also sometimes is not hard to understand because it's not talking about money. It's talking about an application. It's like Apple, right? It's an app store, but for decentralized apps. If you explain it that way, institutions actually, that especially that invest in tech, they might actually wrap their heads around this much easier. I don't know. So it's hard to say what happens here. I think the big thing though, is even without the flows, it's just this really legitimizes Ethereum. It legitimizes smart contracts. It legitimizes just the crypto ecosystem in general. And I think this is a massive step forward. Plus, I think a lot of regulation is going to come favorably from this now. This is our step in the right direction of what we needed for good regulation. And whether they're like stepping down of that FDIC chairman or not was because of the same stuff. I'm not sure, but it seems things are changing in the political world. And that means 
the ETF approval, great. Regulation is really what's going to be huge. Stablecoin regulation, DeFi regulation, basically allowing institutions to not just buy the ETF, but to come on chain and do things on chain, which is what they really want, the ones that know about it. And, and I think that comes and falls. This was like the first step that was needed. I think it's going to be a big deal no matter what. Just super exciting. So big for the space in so many ways. Kai, before I let you go, just one last question for you. People see a 20% candle on a day and they think FOMO or I missed out. A lot of people think, ah, it's, it already went up. I missed out. Have people missed out or is there more opportunity still ahead? What's funny is yesterday morning, so Monday morning, I before I started work, I had up my, my Quest trade. So this is like my TFSA, my tax free savings account. And I had put some money in there last week and I went to buy ETH E the because it had the discount. And and so I was gonna buy that. And then I got a phone call for a meeting and I never ended up making the trade. And then I kind of forgot about it. And then also the news came out and it went up time percent. I was like, <laughs> shit, what do I do? Now, thankfully, I'm fully exposed to Ethereum. So like this isn't the end of the world for me. Look, we're up 20 something percent now in the last 36 hours. What happens next? Anyone's guess short term. Obviously, if these things don't actually get approved, then see you later. <laughs> this thing's going to tank. Uh, pretty sure they get approved. What happens there? Let's look at Bitcoin. It went up and up and we hit all time highs by the time that it basically was approved. So like probably that happened. So do we have a bit of a pullback here in the very short term? Maybe 20% is massive. Someone's going to take some profits here for sure. But like I said at the beginning, everyone is offside here. Everyone is under allocated. So I think if when this thing gets approved, we're going to have a massive run. And I think ETH gets to all time highs pretty quickly this year. So whether you're buying ETH, whether you're buying assets that are on ETH, I think that's a good play as well. Though, like just like a coin, if the flows are coming, things are getting approved, like you do not want to not be holding ETH. That would just be like, don't, there's a lot of people on Twitter right now that are like, okay, ETH, ETF getting approved. It's up 20%. What beta token should I hold? Should I buy Pepe? Should I buy this? And it's maybe with a little bit of percent of your portfolio, but like buy ETH. What do you mean? Obviously that's the thing you need to be buying. It's the for sure thing. You just watch this happen with Bitcoin. Don't mid curve this thing. Just buy mm -hmm. it and you're going to get to all time highs. It's a double from here. Like it's pretty massive. Kai, thanks so much for joining us today and taking us through this exciting news. Uh, everybody listening in, we are trying out a new format of shorter episodes that we're going to bring to you on a more regular basis in order to keep you guys up to date, but in a short amount of time. We'd love to hear some quick feedback from you. Do you like this short format? What did you think about today's episode? Comment on YouTube or shoot us a note on Twitter or wherever you are listening to this. Always great to get your guys' feedback. That's a wrap on today's show. Have yourselves an awesome day and we will see you guys Friday for the roll up. Thank you for listening to Milk Road Radio, the easiest path to get smarter about crypto. If you like this episode, share it and hit subscribe or follow so you don't miss out on the next one. There's also a link in the description to our free five minute daily newsletter where we simplify crypto for you while making you laugh. And if you're willing to step up your crypto investing game, then we'll leave a link to Milk Road Pro as well, your number one resource to help you invest successfully in crypto. One final note, this podcast is for educational purposes purposes only and nothing we say is financial advice. Crypto is risky, so you should never invest more than you're willing to lose. Thank you, friends, and we'll see you in the next one.